Greetings all and welcome to Sleepy Hollow. I'm Jonathan Cruck, a master storyteller known for performing The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I'm going to be taking you on a story tour to discover some of the secrets and mysteries within this legend still haunting us today. The cognomen of Ichabod Crane was not inapplicable to his person. He was tall but exceedingly lank, with narrow shoulders, long arms and legs, hands that dangled out a mile of his sleeves, feet that might have served for shovels, and his whole frame most loosely hung together. Washington Irving met a fellow by the name of Jesse Merwin near Kinderhook in Columbia County. He told a tale of being in love with a Dutch girl, but he continued to be thwarted by the locals. Why, they even dressed up as a kind of ghost to drive him off. Most likely, Irving found Merwin the most compelling figure to turn into his schoolmaster Ichabod Crane from Connecticut. We're standing at the headstone of Katrina Van Tassel. The name, of course, appears in the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Katrina Van Tassel was the only child of a substantial Dutch farmer. She was a blooming lass, a fresh 18, plump as a partridge, ripe and melting and rosy-cheeked as one of her father's peaches. It's most likely Washington Irving got inspiration for the feisty, flirtatious Katrina from a story told about Eleanor Van Tassel during the American Revolution when she got abducted and they tried to hold her for ransom. She kicked those cowboys who were working for the British right out of her sight and managed to escape and told the tale all about Sleepy Hollow in Tarrytown. The dominant spirit, however, that haunts this enchanted region and seems to be commander-in-chief of all powers of the air is the apparition of a figure on horseback without a head. It is said to be by some the ghost of a Hessian trooper whose head had been carried away by a cannonball in some nameless battle during the Revolutionary War. Thus, it's universally known as the Headless Horseman. During the Battle of White Plains, right around Halloween, 1776, General William Heath described a Hessian trooper, an artilleryman, getting his head blown away and his horse brought down. And that's where the legend rises. Good folk from Sleepy Hollow and environs found the body and had it buried here in an unmarked grave. The spirit is said to continue to rise up and roam these roads on midnight blasts seeking that missing head. An opening in the trees now cheered him with the hopes that the church bridge was at hand. The wavering reflection of a silver star in the bosom of the brook told him that he was not mistaken. He saw the walls of the church dimly glaring under the trees beyond. He recollected the place where Brom Bones, its ghostly competitor, had disappeared. If I can but reach that bridge, thought Ichabod, I am safe. <laughs> the sequestered situation of this church seems always to have made it a favorable haunt of troubled spirits. It stands on a knoll surrounded by locust trees and lofty elms, from which, its descent, whitewashed walls shine modestly forth like Christian purity, beaming through the shades of retirement. 
This is the old Dutch church of Sleepy Hollow. It began to get built in 1685 and was consecrated in 1697. It's still an active church, one of the oldest in the United States. This church, this venerable institution is the very setting of the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Just behind it is where the headless horseman was laid to rest. We are at Sunnyside, Washington Irving's homestead. It is the setting of the frolic that Ichabod went to and danced with and courted Katrina. It was toward evening that Ichabod arrived at the castle of the Heer Van Tassel, which he found thronged with the pride and flower of the adjacent country. Fame, I would pause to dwell upon the world of charms that burst upon the enraptured gaze of my hero as he entered the state parlor of Van Tassel's mansion. Alas, my friends, truth to tell, Washington Irving did not write his most famous stories here at Sunnyside. He did those back in Great Britain. Right now I'm standing in the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery where Washington Irving is buried. He died in November of 1859 and he took to his grave the secret. Was it Brom Bones who was dressed up as the galloping Hessian frightening off Ichabod or was it actually the real ghost of the Headless Horseman, perhaps still pervading these parts even unto this day? Thanks for accompanying us on this legendary tour of Sleepy Hollow. Remember, the Headless Horseman is still about, so here in Sleepy Hollow, hold on to your heads. Thank you.